Today we are going to be talking about passive active and switchable CAN bus termination resistors. A super, super thrilling and exciting topic, but it does actually have some cool implications for the future. So just a quick due diligence, our CAN bus basics originally released in 1986 by the Bosch Corporation, followed up in 1991 with CAN bus 2.0, Utilizes a twisted wire pair for shielding from the notoriously hostile automotive electrical environment and has termination resistors of 120 ohms on each end of the network for a total network bus resistance of 60 ohms. The magic 60 ohm number that we've all come to know and hate, which has been changing with secure gateway modules. And what we're getting into today is going to be a further change for us in the future. So first we'll touch on passive termination resistors, which is something we're all used to from years of going through and dealing with CAN bus. So we have our 120 ohm resistors on either end of the network. They are installed at the furthest ends of the network. And there is usually one in the ECM, usually not always, depends on network topology. And the secondary one will be at the furthest end of the network opposite of our primary resistor. This could be either a resistor within the wire harness or a resistor contained within the module. The reason the resistor is there is to help regulate overall network voltages, as well as to prevent ringing of the signal and some other electromagnetic interference, but the primary is termination of the signal. So what happens is if we start a signal out of our ECM, it comes through the module, hits the bus and goes out to our BCM. Without a termination resistor in place, that signal reaches the wires and then it starts to bounce back, at which point it's colliding with oncoming traffic from the other, from the other modules. So that leads to all sorts of fun, fun stuff. A single failed termination resistor can normally let us go quite a long period of time before the communication errors stack up. Two failed resistors, not so much. You're basically guaranteed to have network communication errors. So now we'll get into active termination resistors, which is something I've dealt with a lot. John Deere is one company I know uses them. I can't say I've seen a whole lot of other ones, but we'll run you through John Deere's system. We have an active termination resistor with six wires, two battery powers, two battery grounds, a yellow and a green. Yellow being our can high, green being our can low. We have our power and ground input from a key switch source on the machine, and these are the power supply for the CAN bus termination circuit. The remaining wires are what is called a twisted quad CAN bus. This is the data pipeline, the data highway for the entire network. These are four wires twisted together within a black rubber heat sheathing that then goes to all the modules. So here's an example of it. We have multiple modules, and right here we have our key switch power source. So power and ground goes into our six wire active termination resistor, G here, which then breaks out into four wires going to our passive termination resistor. So we have our CAN low or CAN high, battery ground, battery positive. Now what's interesting here is that we have our CAN lines going into each module on the network, and then we have our powers and grounds are twisted and run all the way up to the module, but do not enter the module. Why we do this is by having a powered up power and ground here, we are able to actually go through and generate an electromagnetic field around the communication wires. By generating our own intentional electromagnetic field, we're able to knock out any additional noise sources. So uh, piezo, and lecture, uh, piezo or solenoid injectors, routing too close to an alternator, whatever it may be, we're able to shield out that noise from the communication network, which might potentially give us either bad data bits, corruption, or completely false messages, depending on what kind of electromagnetic interference is coming into the network. So now let's look at switchable CAN bus termination resistors, which is something that's been talked about since uh, about 1994 was the 
first reference I saw to it in print. I'm sure we were experimenting with it before that, but each module in theory would have its own termination resistor embedded within it. These resistors are switchable via computer input signal. The vast majority of the designs I've seen utilize a transistor to switch the resistor on or off. And it allows the network to turn the termination on or off as it requires based off of network traffic or overall network topology design. So it's actually software controlled, which is interesting because it allows for easier to adaptation of any given network topology whatsoever. So if we have a base model, which has something along the lines of a standard bus network, it's got a small number of modules. And then we have a top tier vehicle. So we're going from a, a GM work truck all the way up to a high country of Denali with every option under the sun. We're gonna have a network topology change. So there's two ways to do it. One, we can just keep throwing modules on there and hope that the original engineers who designed the work truck design all the other additional modules to fit in between so that we always have the same ends. Not likely. Plus, we get into hybrid modules. So if we have a bus network such as this, that's fine for a, a low tier vehicle, but then we start to incorporate hybrid architectures. So we have our normal bus, and then off of this node, we may have a star network of additional add-on nodes based off of the trim level of the vehicle. Makes it incredibly difficult, number one, to find the true end of the network, the furthest distance point, plus, that's a whole lot more modules talking, especially if we start treeing off of each one of these on the bus. A lot of network communication can overload the bus, can cause ringing in smaller subsections. So we want to have the option to switch termination resistors on and off as needed in order to minimize ringing and minimize overall network noise. So cool engineering wise, it makes their job easier. We all hate engineers, right? So screw them. But really, what we care about is the diagnostics portion. I haven't seen this implemented on any vehicles I've worked on yet. Maybe somebody has. They can fill me in. But a couple questions I have. Will there be data pids? Will we be able to see an indication of status and desired status? Actual versus desired. Is a BCM turning its terminating resistor on? Why? Are we going to throw codes for this? Could be. Are we going to have bi-directional controls of termination resistors? It would be nice. I can think of a, quite a few reasons why I might want to do that. I'll let you guys think of your own. And what's the coolest to me is, is this a lead into self-healing networks? So what's a self-healing self -healing network? Well, here we have our standard CAN bus data packets. We have CAN high up here, CAN low down here, and then we actually utilize the math channel, CAN high minus CAN low, to give us what the computer is actually interpreting. And we can see here we have nice, easily decoded data packets. Awesome. Perfect termination resistors, perfect network traffic, everything's doing its job. What happens when we have something like this? This was a... Uh, 2014 Buick Regal, uh, Chad at the practical, practical Mechanic actually allowed me to use this capture. But we can see here our CAN low is going all over the place. It's going all wonky. I mean, even before that, with our signals bouncing around, we can't even get good data packets through. And then once we go high here, we're done. We have no communication. Well, with switchable termination resistors, Say, and this was not a termination resistor failure, but say it was, we could then theoretically switch on via software in, within our own vehicle programming, we could switch on another termination resistor, get rid of this fault. What if we take that same technology of being able to have the software recognize a failed termination resistor or a need for one based on network traffic, and we take that to the next level? What if we allowed the software to switch on and off the CAN transceivers within any given non-critical module? 
So say we have a, a power, this was a power window module that was acting up and started to short and take down the entire communication network. Normally we would expect the vehicle to stall, but in the future, if we can switch the resistors and then we go to being able to switch the overall module on and off because it's a non-safety critical module, what if we could just send a signal, shut the module off, and let the vehicle continue to operate with a you know, permanent DTC in there until we fix the problem, how much time and effort would that save us? How much time and effort would it save us to be able to isolate modules on the network incredibly easily, especially when you're not seeing as many sl network splice packs as you used to? I see a lot of implications for it. There's also downsides. If you have a, a module failing, Testing wise, we can't do a whole lot because if we can't communicate with it, we can't tell it to shut off, but it could work. It's an interesting aspect. It's something I think is worth looking into and hopefully this short video here has given everybody else a little bit of motivation to look into some of the future technology coming along. So do a little research, do some patent searching on active or switchable CAN bus termination. Read up a little bit. It's something that's coming down the pipeline. They've used it in regular computer networks, as in offices and things such as that, our PCs, for years now. Uh, in laboratory usage, it's also been used. So it's, it's coming down the line. It's going to be needed as we get more and more and more modules on these network buses. And so I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that it's out there, give you guys a chance to do a little research and get somewhat familiar with the idea before you start running into it in the field. So thank you and have a good one.